Okay, so here we have a two-dimensional system of differential equations. So we notice the derivative indicates it's a differential equation, first order derivative, but this is a vector x, so it would have entries either x, y, or x1, x2, whatever you want to call those dependent variables. So I'm just going to think of them as x, y here, uh, since I don't really like subscripts that much. Uh, so two dependent variables, and then their derivatives equal to this 2 by 2 matrix times the dependent variables x, y. So two-dimensional, linear, homogeneous system. All right, and then over here, I have two vector functions, x1 and x2. And so we're going to do a couple of different things with those. We are, first of all, going to show that these two functions are actually solutions to this system of differential equations. So you might be asked to show that something is a solution or to show whether or not it's a solution. And your work is pretty much the same either way. You need to take appropriate derivatives and substitute into the differential equation, see if it makes the differential equation true. All right, so for x1, uh, I'm just going to write the derivative here, x1 prime. So I'll first of all find the derivative of this vector function. Uh, so I'll have 4e to the 2t in the first entry and negative 4 e to the 2t in the second entry. And then I'm going to substitute into the differential equation x1 prime for, x, for the derivative, and then equals this matrix times the x for x1. And so let's see, on the left side, I'll have my derivative. And then what I want to see is, is that really equal to what I get when I put in on the right side. Uh, so in place of the x, be careful when you do these problems that you're grabbing the right thing, the derivative, the original function, one of the original functions, the other original function, so labeling and notation is really important here. All right, so what I'm trying to see is are these two equal? Uh, since I told you these are solutions, you know they should come out to be equal, but what you're trying to do is show that. So you want to show enough of the work here to indicate that it really does turn out to be what we said it is over here. All right, so this is a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 1 vector. We'll end up with a 2 by 1 vector. And so I'll take the first row times the column here. So 1 times 2 e to the 2t is 2 e to the 2t minus 1 minus 1 times negative 2 e to the 2t. So the negative times the negative will be positive 2 e to the 2t. And then second row times this column. So 1 times 2 e to the 2t plus 3 times negative 2. So minus 6 e to the 2t. And then we see that when we simplify, that really does equal 4e to the 2t and minus 4e to the 2t when I combine these terms. So yes, they are equal. Okay, so that was for x1. And then we'll do the same thing for x2. You might notice that x2 is a little bit more complicated here. So I do have to be a little bit more careful with my derivatives and perhaps uh, a little bit more um, careful computation with the matrix multiplication as well. Uh, all right, so when I find the derivative here, I'll have to use product rule. All right, so the derivative of this first function, so treating the 1 minus t as the entire first function here, so the derivative of that will be negative 1 times the second function, so negative e to the 2t, plus the first function, 1 minus t, times the derivative of the second function, so times 2e to the 2t. And then in the second entry, also using product rule, derivative of the first function, so derivative of t is 1 times e to the 2t, plus the first function times the derivative of the second function, 2e to the 2t. And so because I'm going to be putting that in, I'm going to go ahead and do a little simplifying of this before I do that. Um, so I have a term here that is a negative 1 e to the 2t. And then when I simplify here and distribute through, I'll have a plus 2 e to the 2t. So negative 1 plus 2 will be 1 e to the 2t. 
and then a minus 2t, e to the 2t. Just simplifying the terms here, distributing that through. And then this one's pretty much the second entries, pretty much uh, simplified. I'll just rearrange these factors in that second entry. Uh, okay, so again, though, I want to substitute into the differential equation and verify that both sides of the differential equation are the same. So in place of the derivative, I will put what I got for the derivative. And I want to determine, is that equal to, so I put a little question mark here, uh, the matrix 1, negative 1, 1, 3 times my x. So that would be the original x2. Uh, and because of the way I ended up distributing these through, I'm going to actually go ahead and distribute those through as I write this down. So I'll have e to the 2t minus t e to the 2t as the entire first entry there. And then the second entry will be t e to the 2t. Okay, so again, I'm trying to see if these two things are equal. So I'm going to go ahead and do the matrix multiplication over here on the right. And when I simplify that, my hope is that I get what's over here, if this really is a solution. Um, so doing the first row times the two entries here in this column. So when I take the first entry times the first entry here, I'll have 1 times all that stuff, which is just all that stuff, e to the 2t minus t e to the 2t. And then the second entry times the second entry, so minus 1 times t e to the 2t. So minus t e to the 2t. And then second row times the column. So 1 times the first entry plus 3 times the second entry. And when I simplify that, uh, I've got two terms here, a negative t e to the 2t and a negative t e to the 2t that do simplify to give me my negative 2t e to the 2t. And then in the second entry, I have a minus 1 t e to the 2t plus 3t e to the 2t, which do add up to give me my plus 2 e to t e to the 2t. So those are indeed equal. I told you that they were. I said verify that these are solutions. So. Uh, I kind of told you that they were, but sometimes in the homework you're going to be asked to determine whether or not they are solutions. All right, so I have two solutions to this two-dimensional homogeneous linear system. So why that's important is that we had a theorem about the dimension of a solution space, and it tells us that if I have an n-dimensional linear homogeneous system, then a basis for the solution space is formed by n linearly independent solutions to the system. So I have a two-dimensional linear homogeneous system and two solutions. So provided these are linearly independent, then they form a basis for the solution space to the system. So we have many ways of showing linear independence. We can use uh, the definition of linear independence to show that two things are linearly independent. We can use an alternate form of the definition. If you only have two objects, it's pretty easy to see that these are linearly independent because they are not scalar multiples of each other. I can't take scalar multiples of something that doesn't have a t e to the 2t and get the t e to the 2t functions that are here. So these two are pretty clearly linearly independent. Or you can also use a Ronskian as a way to show linear independence. I'm going to go ahead and do that to show linear independence. So the Ronskian is going to be the determinant of the matrix formed by putting these vectors as the columns, whatever order you want to put those in. So 2e to the 2t and negative 2e to the 2t in the first column. And then the second column will be formed by this. Again, I'm going to go ahead and distribute through my e to the 2t there just to make things uh, careful. Be careful that your columns don't run into each other, by the way, and um, smush together and become uh, all one column or something. Um, and then in the second entry, I have t e to the 2t. 
Okay, so determinant of this two by two matrix, pretty straightforward here, I will get two e to the two t times t e to the two t, which will be two t e to the four t, adding those exponents, and then minus this product. So minus the negative will make that plus two e to the two t times this, if you can simplify it without messing up as you write this down, that's okay too, but I was afraid I might make some mistakes here. So uh, when I do that and distribute through, notice that we'll have a 2e to the 2t times t e to the 2t, uh, which will give me a minus 2t e to the 4t term, which will cancel with that one. And so all I'll be left with is this term here, 2e to the 2t times e to the 2t. So that's 2e to the 4t which is not ever zero. So because that determinant is not zero, that tells us that these two functions are linearly independent. So x1 and x2 are linearly independent. Okay, so why is that important? That tells us that these two functions are a basis for the solution space to this two-dimensional homogeneous linear system. So there are a lot of ways that you might write what that conclusion means. You could say that a basis for the solution space is formed by these two. Uh, you could also say that these two are a fundamental set of solutions for the system. Or often the way we write that is that we will say that the general solution to the system or all solutions to the system are given by just forming a generic linear combination of these two functions. So x is equal to c1 times one of them. Plus c2 times the other one. Um, you might notice that there is a common e to the 2t that you could factor out. And that's perfectly fine as well. You also could go ahead and do some matrix arithmetic and combine this into a single two by one vector with all of this stuff kind of in the matrix. So there's a lot of different forms that you could write this in. Uh, but remembering that C1 and C2 can take on all real numbers here. We've got infinitely many linear combinations of these. If I had an initial condition, I could put that in and find specific values of C1 and C2 that would give me a particular solution. So I'm not going to do that in this video, partly because of time and partly because of space, but we've done that enough times in other problems that you should probably be able to think about that. You just put in the appropriate numbers, you figure out what the C1 and C2 are, and then you put those numbers back in to find a specific example of all solutions. Um, so, all right, two big deal things here though. Dimension of system equals number of linearly independent solutions needed to form a basis for the solution space or generate all solutions by taking all linear combinations of those two functions.